Games of Gods Entertainment of Zeus On the Olympus, there prevailed envy, rage, anger, revenge, constant conflicts and quarrels, sorting out who is better, who has greater influence among the elite of the gods, and who is more powerful and glorious among mortal people. As they say, the fish rots from the head. How did Zeus entertain himself? The legend of the gods of Olympus mentioned the following. Zeus destroys the race of the Atlanteans, who forgot about worship of the gods. Zeus destroyed the human race several times trying to create a perfect human. Because his desire was to destroy the miserable kind of people and to plant a new one. Zeus sends curses, which are terribly implemented, on certain heroes and a number of generations of people. Legends of Tantalus, Sisyphus, Atreides, Cadmetes. By the order of Zeus, Prometheus was chained to the rock for stealing the spark of the Hephaestus fire to help people, doomed by Zeus to a miserable fate. In honor of Zeus, the Panhellenic Olympic Games were held in Olympia. Trojan War Zeus Disposes of Heroes One of the central topics of Homer's Iliad is the Trojan War. The ancient writers explain the origin of the Trojan War as the will of Zeus who wished to reduce the Earth's burden. Not only Zeus contributed to the emergence of the Trojan War, but the war itself was also a consequence of Zeus's decision to punish people for their wickedness. It all began with pride and strife. According to Zeus's will, the events leading to long-lasting war have developed, and games of the gods started. Chess games began to be played out. If you carefully trace the history of various wars of humanity, ranging from the Sumerians to this day, you can see that the severest wars in human history were played out identically. Large troops were gathered from the warring parties. The Achaean army included the noblest heroes. Odysseus, Achilles, both Ajaxus and Diomedes, and many others. Agamemnon, as the most powerful of the Achaean kings, was elected the leader of the whole army. He was fabulously wealthy and had an eminent position among the Hellenic kings. The Achaean fleet, which was assembled in the harbor, contained over a thousand ships. Before the decisive battles, plague was sent upon the troops. After long wars and the conquest of Troy, not only the population of that area and its defenders were killed, but the various heroes were also destroyed. The quarrels immediately arose in the camp of the Achaeans. By the will of the gods, a lot of ships, deceived by the false signal of Napleus, perished of the waves and wind during a terrible storm, while others crashed upon coastal rocks. Even the surviving troop commander, Agamemnon, the commander of the troops who got wealth and loot from the war, was immediately killed on his return home. As a victim of conspiracy of his wife, Clytemnestra, in Aegisthus, the Zeus entourage knew in advance of the heroes who were destined to die in this war. That is, their fate had been predetermined. A bright example is Achilles, who was later on a role model for the Alexander of Macedonia. Achilles Heel The sea goddess Thetis, knowing that her son Achilles, while he was the youngest of the generation of heroes, the future participants of the Trojan War, was destined to die, tried to hide him. However, eventually, this still didn't save the hero who was considered to be invulnerable. He was found, returned to the Trojan War, and killed. He died from two arrows of Paris, guided by the hand of Apollo. The expression Achilles' heel is for the elite was an example that it's enough to hit a hero into a vulnerable spot to kill him. While for mere mortals, Achilles 
way of life was instilled as a behavior model for new generations of mortal heroes, where a hero had to know that he was destined to live a short life, and he had to strive to live it so that the glory of his unprecedented bravery would last among descendants for centuries. Hero. The etymology of the ancient Hellenic word hero is interesting. By the word hero, the ancient Greeks originally called the spirit of the dead, which influenced the living ones. That is a subpersonality. Heroes were the souls of outstanding ancestors, leaders. Later on, the concept expanded, and some people born from the union of the gods with mortals began to be categorized as heroes. In the poems, such as the Iliad, heroes were considered to be benefactors of people, slayers of monsters and giant robbers. But there was one point. The main heroes were often doomed to death by the will of the gods or committed suicide. And as a rule, in honor of the day of their death, general sports games were held with lighting of a torch. Hence the tradition of the Olympic games in ancient Greece emerged the same story can be traced in the Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh, where gods decide on the death of the hero. Having refused immortality to him, they announce through their messenger that he will have a remarkable after-death fate, and a monument will be erected to him. Moreover, every summer, in the month of Ninjar, athletic competition in his honor will take place near his statue. The gods reminded to Gilgamesh that he had been born for long-term kingship, but he wasn't promised eternal life. They advised him to accept his lot and hurry to his ancestors. That is, the cult of a deceased hero was intentionally cultivated. The life of one hero was not enough to fulfill all of the plans of the god's elite. Therefore, the idea of suffering of a heroic personality and endless overcoming of trials and difficulties is strength in the myths. The hero often experiences painful death. The self-immolation of Heracles dies by the hand of a deceitful villain, Theseus, by the will of a hostile deity, Orpheus, Hippolytus. As a result, the image of Heracles stays on the Olympus while his shadow wanders in Hades. At that, the hero's exploits and sufferings are regarded as a kind of trial, the reward for which comes after death. Priests were looking for a formula by which people will live all their lives in expectation of immortality, not working spiritually on themselves, but wasting their lives on strengthening the power of priests and leaders. That's where the substitutions came from. That, a human can meet God only after death, but not unite with him during lifetime by working spiritually on oneself. Meaning it's a false hope, promises from the system for later times. Millennia passed and the same game was being imposed on the human society. All the same division into gods, heroes, and savages as the Sumerians had. Except for these concepts were increasingly embedded into the minds of new generations as the only form of existence of a human being, which supposedly his or her freedom and life goal consisted in. But in fact, there was an enslavement of humankind by the system and concentration of attention on the consciousness's dictate. Etymology of the ancient Greek word, tragedy. In the ancient Greek language, the word chogos means goat, ode, song. Thus the word chogodia literally meant the song of goats. As it is known, tragedy is a theatrical entertainment for the elite audience. Was born in ancient Greece, Alada, the most ancient theatrical performances were inextricably connected with the cult of the Hellenic god of fertility, the son of Zeus and Demeter, Dionysus, or his other name is Bacchus, where the word Bacchanalia came from as an unrestrained self-will, a wild feast, an orgy, a festival in honor of Bacchus, the god of wine and merriment. At first, various legends about Dionysus were set forth in the form of a dialogue between the chorus and its leader, the Corpheus. The chorus usually consisted of satires, goat-hoofed companions of Dionysus, actors who imitated satires. These half-humans, half-goats, were dressed in goat skins. 
exactly singing of the chorus of goat hoofed sapphires got the name of Tragodia. And so, it goes since those times. For people it's a tragedy, while for the elite it is merely a song of goats. That is, the uncontrolled revelry of the animal mind system in the human society where people's attention is concentrated solely on the human animal nature. Fear, hatred, anger, conflicts, the system is always insatiable. What does the dictate of consciousness demand when it monocratically rules the personality, bread and circuses? For the system which is always hungry, the bread is human life. Bloody massacres and the circuses are concentration of people's attention on these events, stimulation of the animal nature in a human, and consequently it is feed for the system. Therefore, it's not surprising that the main entertainment of El and his elite were focused on wars and conflicts, especially when unsurpassed weapons were in their sole possession. Climate Weapons Aegeokos is one of the epithets of Zeus, literally meaning the bearer of the Aegis, the shield bearer. Aegis is the shield of Zeus. Aegis, or Aegis, in translation from ancient Greek means storm, whirlwind. It was believed that Zeus raised severe storms by means of this shield. The modern expression, under the Aegis, means being under the protection, patronage of a person, or acting within the framework of an institution, organization, or enterprise. For example, to act under the Aegis of the United Nations and so on. It is mentioned that Zeus, reigning on Mount Olympus, commands nature and rules the destiny of people. He creates thunder and by collecting clouds he causes storms with the single shake of his aegis. He is the sender of winds, rains and downpours. Originally Zeus didn't possess these weapons. At the beginning of his rise and struggle for power, his brothers and sisters were forced to give thunder and lightning into Zeus's possession. It was believed that by means of the aegis, the terrifying shield, Zeus raised severe storms, throwing lightning with his right hand. With his left hand, Zeus shakes the aegis. Covered with a hundred tassels, there was the head of Medusa, the gorgon in the center of the aegis. By shaking the aegis, Zeus generated peals of thunder that frightened gods and mortals. The aegis belonged not only to Zeus, it could be carried by Athena, and in exceptional cases, by Apollo. The fact that destructive storms and winds were the field of activity of various gods, who destroyed by means of them their enemies and the cities they hated, is also mentioned in the Sumerian and Akkadian epic. According to a legend, Zeus owned winds. He enclosed the winds behind the steep cliffs of the floating island of Aeolia. Surrounded by a copper wall, Zeus entrusted Aeolus the king of this island, to look after them. It was mentioned that if one gives total freedom to these winds, they will raise the earth and the sea into the air. The duty of Aeolus was to release winds one by one, according to the gods or his own desire. When a storm was needed, Aeolus threw a spear into the rock, and the wind began to blow from the formed hole until Aeolus closed it. He was so diligent towards the Olympian gods that in the opinion of Zeus's wife, Hera, he even deserved an invitation to attend the Feast of the Gods. Attributes of Zeus are Aegis, Scepter, and Hammer. Zeus is the establisher of every order and law on the earth. The gods and mortals are in awe of him. By violent suppression of resistance and punishment, Zeus establishes his principles by force. One of Zeus's weapons is also the thunderbolt that emits lightning. The image of God's weapons may be found not only on the artifacts of ancient Greece, but also of Sumer, ancient India, and other peoples. Ancient Greek legends say that Cyclops forged thunder, lightning, and thunderbolt for Zeus to fight against the Titans. 
Zeus puts into action the thunderbolt, thunder, and lightning in battles, so that Hades itself trembles and the giant earth moans sorrowfully. When the Olympians and the Titans throw rocks and mountains at each other, the heat from Zeus's lightning scorches the world. A whirlwind of flame rises. The earth, the ocean, and the sea boil. Heat covers the earth in chaos. The sun is covered by a cloud of rocks and cliffs which the enemies hurl. The sea roars, the earth trembles, of the giants trample while their wild shouts reach the starry sky. Aren't these descriptions familiar to you? As the consequences of atomic bomb burst? 